Let's, let's, talk, let's look at a few specific heroes. Who, which one do you want to talk about? Silas. Right, let's talk about Silas. Silas is really interesting. He made one basket. And they tell stories, and the stories grow and grow, and then 20 years later, he's flying through the air, full court, smiling and dunking. Right? And that's on, if anyone can find the page number on that. Um, middle of 47. He threw, grabbed the defensive rebound, took a step, and flew the length of the court, and then walked off and retired. And then fell into the to the cycle of, of drink. Like what? What can we tell about the sort of morality of what's good and bad? And this? Well, it's kind of like things on the reservation. Um, like the life is different because there's not there's no real ramifications of getting in trouble. Like and there's you really don't have to do anything because like you're there on this reservation, you have land, you have shelter. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no, no federal taxes, and um, Native, most Native Americans get some sort of small amount of per month to live off of from the tribe. But these people are these people don't do that. So they're like crippled with inaction. They notice something's wrong with the traffic light, and a year goes by and nothing happens. And they're still sitting in the same spot, drinking the same Pepsi. This is Victor and Adrian. I feel like this traffic light um, kind of represents. It's like it's a big symbol because I think red shows you like it's stopped, but the fact that the red isn't working shows like they have no. They're not. They're never going to stop and get themselves together. And the fact that no one's trying to actually fix this light, like it shows that they're not going to try and fix themselves. All right. No, nothing's getting fixed. <laughs> and what the problem is the cycle. People end up drinking and throwing their promise away. Um, Do you like the characters enough to say, man, I hope they like like their life gets better? Or so we can criticize them, right? Yeah. There's a criticism here that they don't do enough to to make their lives better, solve the problems on the reservation. They keep they keep walk they see keep seeing that their heroes walk by and they say he's going to be a drunk, and they don't do they don't stop it. They don't do anything to stop it. This is one of the the criticisms in the story of of characters. Victor and Adrian are anti heroes. In almost a negative way, they, they're om some people have called them the last men because they just sit there and they're like, "Okay, this is how it is. One one hero down, another one up. One hero down, another one up." Uh, Alex, I'm good. I don't really root against them because I kind of understand their situation. But I don't, you know, I don't think it would be bad if their situation improved. I don't think it will. I don't think it's likely, but I'm not going to root against them. Um, when a traffic signal goes out, it's supposed to be treated as a blink of red. And so when it goes out, it makes absolutely no difference to anyone's life uh, in a way. And so when their heroes fall, you know, it's not even a small road bump. It's just good. Good. So the heroes, but let's, let's, the heroes are important, people that they sort of anoint, right? Victor was one of them one time. I used to be a good ball player. Um, he starts to talk about it on uh, on 46, and then he talks about it at the end as well how he lost it. Um, Victor's one of them. Silas, Sirius, Julius, Windmaker, and who who at the end is the hero? Lucy, the third grader. No, he's the, he says it does it doesn't matter. This is on page uh, 
can't find the page, but it says that it doesn't doesn't really matter because only one car an hour goes through. Yeah. So I mean, it's showing that like, even though in his life that he doesn't stop to think the things he can do, I mean, his life hasn't changed. He doesn't know what a great life feels like and what a yeah. It's almost like that. So it's so hopeless. If that's a symbol, it's so hopeless that even if they do fix it, it doesn't make a difference. It's not. Yeah. It's, it's almost a waste. And that's a that's a, a commentary on the context in which he's living, in which he, the author grew up. Victor and Adrian are almost the author's mouthpieces here. But then, like looking at it just culturally, I know uh, like Native Americans, like their their idea of success and working hard is just maintaining life, like being able to provide for yourself, off, live off the land, do such things like that. Like I feel like we're criticizing these heroes. Like all the, they do have potential to be great. Like realistically, getting off of their reservation is just it's not it's not something that they're going to do. So like, even though these people aren't successful, it's not like they're really going to be successful anyway. Like by our standards. So different standard of success culturally. Yeah. Like they're, they're and here, and how's it how's it directly addressed here? What's their standard of success? It's the basketball court. Uh, and there's a couple of references to, to the basketball players being little warriors. Mm -hmm. And you know what, Native American cultures, a lot of times it was a warrior culture uh, where that's where sort of pride and dignity was won. Um, Scott? Oh, I was going to say uh, that I think it's important because we have the terms hero and anti hero and uh, Arnold brought up a good point about. What context we use using them in? Because um, we, whatever we would consider a hero or an anti-hero, someone we can relate to, um, we live in a very specific time and culture. You know? Yeah. Obviously, there's I mean, humans are composed of. Um, there are certain timeless stories, but uh, a lot of things change when you talk about the difference. The difference between Native Americans current situation yeah, in, in that area. Because other Native Americans, Native Americans in that area do not have any sort of economic boom. Yeah. Booms. And the word hero really doesn't mean what it means to us. Yeah, and so what Trevor Lexi's doing is he's trying to show you sort of what heroism is in his culture. And you're, he's putting you there for the first time maybe into Native American culture as a Native American writer. So let's you know if you ha you have to look at the details of the heroes themselves and start to analyze them to figure out what he's doing. So I'm going to read you a couple passages. Uh, this is about Julius Windmakers. Julius Windmaker. Um, I'd only seen Julius 45 play a few times, but he had that gift, that grace, those fingers. Uh, one time he scored 67 points, and, and the Indians won by 40. I didn't know they'd be riding horses, I heard the coach of the white team say when I was leaving. I mean, Julius was an artist, moody. A couple times he walked right off the court during the middle of a game because there wasn't enough competition. That's how he was. He would throw a crazy pass, surprise us all, and send it out of bounds. But nobody called it a turnover because we all knew that one of his teammates should have been there to catch the pass. And then of Silas Sirius. I was there when he grabbed that defensive rebound, took a step, and flew the length of the court, did a full spin in midair, and then dunked that fucking ball. And I don't mean it looked like he flew, or it was so beautiful it was like he almost flew. I mean he flew, period. And then he walks off the court and never plays again. He's one basketball move. Who, these are the heroes. These are the people they're looking up to. What, is, what do these passages mean? The descriptions are there on purpose to, to show us something about what heroism is used for. Um, I highlighted the uh, flying part. Um, heroes are somebody who can like save you no matter what. Like they always come to rescue like oh, you know Batman can fly. Well can Spider Man fly? Mm -hmm. well, he has those spidey fly. webs that you can yeah. Well they just come to your rescue and somebody who fly and can save you like can help your rescue is like a hero. Um thing is though I'm reading about it like I when I was reading about it it's talking about like a reservation hero as a hero forever. I don't know what that means. Like, I feel like they're remembered, just that and the other. Like, what, what does that mean? I don't know. 
There's a there's a dig at white culture in there that yeah. we're we're sort of fickle when it comes to what how we celebrate. Um, and <coughs> on the reservation, the heroes remembered forever. I'm not sure what that means in this story. Mm -hmm. Let's examine the, these specific heroes. Oh, I was just gonna comment. Okay, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say like maybe because like, um, but they're so like polite, they're kind of hopeless that when like, someone comes along that does like exactly like kind of heroic qualities or something like that. Um, it's that it's like that it's like really special to them. Like we like our culture, <coughs> there's so many heroes like. So many heroes, you're not gonna remember them all, but there's not that many heroes there, so we'll yeah, everyone we see is, is crippled with an action or drunk or both. Except for these these three basketball players. Do you think that um, they use basketball to kind of relate it to our life and say that, you know, a lot of kids these days uh, in all time have always looked up to basketball players and LeBron James or the Brian those guys are used heroes to some kids. And Definitely, it's a window through which we can look at it. Well, let's stick to Chandler's point if we're going to respond to something. Or a new point? Well, yeah, kind of a new point. On page uh, 67, what you just read, it just said, I mean, do Yeah, or, I'm sorry, 45. Yeah. It says, I mean, Julius was an artist movie. A couple times he walked right off the court and into the game because there wasn't enough competition. I think that just shows that, I mean, you don't, you know, you can't quit like that. You, that's kind of like the, everybody's attitude towards life. They're never able to finish, and they're never really able to um, to really make anything out of their situation. I think that just captures it right there. Like, you just what's the thing in the story? What's the thing that's the most good, the best end result? What measures success? It's only mentioned, uh, I, I believe, twice. No. Not winning. Being happy? No. It's getting out. Twice, twice has mentioned uh, that this is the one that'll that'll make it all the way. Get out, off the reservation. Go to a college. Right. So basketball is seen as this way out. If you're talented enough, you can get to college. Um, it says like right here it's hard to be optimistic on the reservation. So um, their optimism is basketball is going to be what's going to get me out of here. They're putting a lot of hope in the sport. Are the all right? I want to I want to talk about. Go ahead. Can I add to Arnold's point? Yeah. Um, after that, I just kept reading and it said that how that's how it was. Julius could throw a crazy pass to find himself. Send it out of bounds, but nobody called it a tournament because we all knew that one of his teammates should have been there to catch the pass. We loved him, so he, he was definitely looked up to throughout the whole entire town. And they were—I don't know if they were as envious of his talent, and um, they looked up to him in every way, even if he made a mistake. But yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that. They—they they looked up to him so much that when he made mistakes, they blamed someone else. Someone else for his actions. And it says that, and what Arnold read, he says that he was moody. He walked off the court at times as if like he all he never did anything wrong. So who created the hero? They did, right? The people, right? This is, this is not LeBron James. This is a kid who makes turnovers and is sort of mean spirited and and not really, not really a good, a solid, like righteous competitor, right? He seems almost as like a bad. He's Not impetuous, bad. he's moody, he's kind of a punk. He throws a brick through a, a, a BIA, Bureau of Indian Affairs, truck window. He makes turnovers all the time. People just say, you're the hero. That's not so the, the, the hero is being created. Why does the hero need to be created? 